Art Gonski has been making your life better for longer than you know. His career started off with a bank, both literally and figuratively, as he shrunk the power amplifiers in MRIs from five racks to one. That was going to be hard to top, so he moved into consumer electronics, designing everything from laptops and cell phones to plasma TVs and digital satellite transceivers. Today, Art's going to explain the hows and whys of gate drivers because they're everywhere, they're complicated, and he still wants to make your life better. Welcome to Tech Chats, Art. Thank you, Chris, for the introduction. I'm happy to be here and work on the uh, gate drivers and, and the reason why we have to isolate this. One of the primary reasons, and no one ever talks about it, is to protect based on the Darwin, people that make mistakes on the output of the power supplies or the power amplifiers. And instead of killing people and the microprocessors, DSPs, and the ASICs on the input, we try to isolate that. Therefore, if there is a failure, we have a signal that will send back to MCU and the system shuts down and everybody's safe. The digital isolation technologies are the three main ones. Uh, there's an off-chip capacitance digital isolator, and the distance through isolation is 500 micrometers. The on-chip capacitance digital isolator, and the digital isolator with the transformer. And of course, they all have pros and cons, and then we also talked about the Apto. And the Apto is probably one of the oldest and still being used very extensively. And essentially, Apto is the hybrid microelectronic circuit. It has an optical source. It's a LED and an optical detector, which is a photodiode plus IC, contained in a package that couples light. Very simple. And there's actual space. So the advantage of that is a stable isolation gap and a very high common mode noise rejection. Okay, so you mentioned the Darwin aspect earlier, but why else do designers need to worry about isolation? The number one is to provide safety and the signal isolation at the same time. And they are certified with safety agencies just as you will, as I mentioned before. Also, the isolation is very useful to reject noise from input to the output, but they also protect against magnetic interference of the electromagnetic variety. The high tension power lines, there's always noise, noise conducted through the power lines, and electrostatic discharge, also lightning, and that's important, and the digital data crosstalk. On the competitive landscape, and I can tell you that on semi is number one. Motorola created the first one way back, and we're talking 60s here. Then the Fairchild acquired it from Motorola, and now on semi used to be Motorola, acquired from Fairchild, and we're number one. The major issues with it is the optical performance variability across temperature and time, and the common mode transient in interference. And I can tell you that we have solved this on semi. We, we solved that, so there is no more issues across the uh, the temperature and across the time in particular. We actually guarantee almost 30 years, I believe, of the current transfer ratio, CTR, being within the spec. So that's a great achievement. The capacitive common issue, and of course, on semi has it as well, but the main issue is insufficient insulation layer. So there's a safety concern. If you're going over five kilovolts, for example, on the isolation from primary to secondary, there may be a problem, specifically if there's a lighting test involved. The magnetic common issue is the magnetic interference with the EMC, EMC in EMI. So a coil on the primary and coil on the secondary, it's a great antenna. If there's something coming nearby, it will pick up that noise. And so you have to work against that and probably isolate it internally, which we have done it. But with all that, you have an insufficient insulation layer. And there's some issues with it. So in the high noise environment, let's say industrial, robotic, anything in a machine shop type application, that's not going to be great. So where are isolated gate drivers used? Gate driver applications are everywhere, no matter where you look at it. And whether it's industrial drives, the robotics, the electric and the hybrid vehicles, and also isolation still used on the regular gasoline-driven vehicles, the uninterrupted power supplies, and the solar panels. So everything that has a lot of voltage on one end and a smart, low-voltage, low-power devices on the other end has to be protected. And that's where the isolation comes in. The overview of the gate driver and why do you need isolation? The main purpose is to convert the low power control signal from the microcontroller MCU into a high current drive output for the gate of the IGBT or a MOSFET, whether it's a silicon carbide or regular MOSFET silicon type, which is fine. Typical application consists of half bridge topology or could be just a single part. What we try to do with this is to separate the voltage domains. So if you look at the, uh, at the schematic, you see C1 supplies the microcontroller and low voltage side of gate drivers. If you separate the gate the driver A and the B on the input and the output, so VCC1 will be that 3.3 or 5 volts or even 12 volts, but very low current. And it's all going to be reference to ground one. And VCC2 will supply the lower high voltage gate driver, which is in reference to ground two. And this is where the grounds get separated. 
So you have a ground and you have a reference, and that's the important part because you, you don't have that noise coming coupling into each other. And the VCC H will supply the upper high voltage gate driver in reference to ground H, the emitter of the upper IGBT. And at times that VCC H can be close to 600 volts. And so as you can see, you're going to separate that 12 or 5 or 3.3 volts or what have you from the 600 volts. And then you drive the power switches, the high side gate one and the low side gate two. And this is how the uh, basic gate driver works in the Hubbridge application. In terms of products, what does on semi have to offer? The portfolio of the uh, gate drivers when we start with the Opto, because it's been around probably longer than I've been in a business. And more than 1,000 active optocoupler part numbers. On the left, it's a very simple. You have four pins. I don't think it could get any less than that. And all application segments will work with it. It's a very simple, very low-cost part available for just about 98% of all the applications, the simplicity. Our advantage, and probably the workhorse of them all, FOD M8801, that's the best CTR versus temperature. So the CTR stays very standard against the, against the temperature. It's like a rock. The uh, photo triac drivers, and that's important because the triac has to be driven positive and negative. So AC itself on the gate of a triac. And so it's, it's a six pin, which is still pretty inexpensive for the triac drive. White goods or welding for the application would be perfect. And you can control AC mains. For example, if you have a, a part that controls your AC socket, guarantee you there's a triac driver. And usually it's the photo isolated because you need to have the isolation from AC to whatever's driving that on the input. And our advantage is better quality. The IGBT and the MOSFET gate drivers, although different, could be used depending on the switching frequency. Whether it's the motor drivers, solar application, high tension type applications, or welding, for example, that's where the gate drivers would be used with an isolation in between if possible. So basic and smart MOSFET IGBT driver usually would have under voltage lockout, the, the common mode rejection ratio would be great. You can adjust the skew. You can get the power good and VDD would be equal to VSS. And that's a great part to use. It's going to be a little more expensive, but you'd have great features on the part like that. And then we have the uh, high performance parts. Still comes in an eight pin and some, in some cases five pin, which is still pretty inexpensive for the PLC in the, in the industrial field bus type and the consumer goods everywhere to isolate that. It has very high bandwidth or very high gain. And so in a case like that, you can drive with 0.9 volts, probably, which the new MCUs are out there. And with a case like that, everything else is also available. And our own advantage is that we're very competitive on price. And with a case like that, it's very important. And then as you pop up the digital isolation, which we started a few years ago, we have digital isolation coming in the SOIC 16 package. The uh, key feature is the common mode noise immunity. We call it CMTI and also consistent performance across temperature and time. And time is the important part. Remember 30 years on the uh, Opto, so this can do even more than that. And the only advantage is distance through insulation. And we have the highest distance. We're talking micrometers now, right? So, and safety and reliability is the important feature. Next slide, it gives you the uh, digital isolator gate driver on part number selection guide. And I could go through this, but it's more of an eye chart and it's always available and you can always email me with questions. The spec and features where the, the amount of channels you need will be on the left. And I have to mention that if you look on the NCDV option, means you, it's a vehicle. So it's automotive, AACQ qualified. The following is an example of the non-isolated gate driver, which is a very high current, four amps source, six amps sink. And this at the Miller Plateau. And with that, it's very important because if, if the power switch gets stuck at that Miller Plateau voltage, it's gonna sit there and burn and it's going to explode. And so that's going to be a problem. The gate driver has to look into that and shut it down as it gets to that point. And so the VCC, very wide VCC VE range operation with a negative voltage capability, negative voltage happens almost every time something switches off or something switches on, and we can take almost negative 10. So there's a fault indicator for micro. So if the gate driver sees anything that's not correct on the output, it sends the signal to the uh, MCU, MCU shuts it down. Saturation detection with programmable delay, a miller clamp with a high sink current, regulated VRFs for the external use if need be. If you want to drive, for example, uh, an MCU and you have an LDO that's built in, if you can see it with the VCC coming in and the VRF is out there, the tight on the voltage lockout for IGBT safety because you don't want to drive it any lower than the voltage is on IGBT. And of course, the enable input for additional protection. That's how the micro would shut it down double. It shuts down the gate 
modulation, it will shut down the actual uh, part itself at the same time. And it's an SOIC 16, full protection features, but no isolation. The uh, NCD5700 versus NCD5701, A, B, and C, and essentially it's the, uh, the NCD5700 that is used for the NCD5701, all three versions, but the A, B, and C versions are done through different bonding for the reason of some pins will be removed because some customers do not require all the bells and whistles of the SOIC 16 package. So it's a reduced price, reduced features, but still a very effective part with, with the protection that's set for the key applications of the FEDs and the uh, IGBTs. The, uh, the next slide is the 5702 versus 5703A, B, and C, same thing. We don't need, let's say, all the features like an SOIC 16 package, done deal for the customers that don't require every feature that SOIC 16 has, and they don't want to pay the price of it as well. And what about your isolated gate drivers? The isolated gate driver technology for everything that what we've done in this way is the takeaway from the beginning would be isolation technology that is safe, reliable, and certified. The drivers improve system efficiency with the high drive current on the output only, but can be driven with the low current on the input. The isolation technology that does not generate EMI, nor susceptible to the system generated EMI, as it being up noise from the switches that let's say switch from 600 volts to zero in few microseconds or less, and that will generate noise in an antenna. And in cases like this, where the robust common mode transient immunity against the system voltage transients will present in a high voltage and a high power switch application. We took care of it even though, in some cases, as you can see on the upper left, you have coils on the primary, you have coils on the secondary, but we still get five kilovolt isolation minimum. We still have great reliability and aging, and that's across the temperature range and across the EMI. And that's for the inductive, which wasn't easy because I was involved in the testing of the first two generations of our engineering prototypes and the highest drive current for the improved efficiency because the higher you can drive current wise the faster you can turn the part on and the faster you can turn the part off and you can control that and so as you can see in, in many cases we are at eight, eight amps for the source and sync peaks for the Miller plateau we're at four amps and the sync Miller plateau is at six amps where everybody else sort of hang around two and a half to four six amps or something like that and so the next slide would give us an idea of the 16-pin isolated gate driver, NCD57000 now. So previous slides, you've seen 5700 with every bells and whistle. Now this is 57000, which is essentially 5700 with the built-in isolation. Very important. High current on the output. So it's a 4 amp for the source and the 6 amps for the sink at the Miller Plateau. So you can power through that gate, capacitive gate drive. Galvanic isolation with minimum of 5 kilovolts withstand and 1400 volts working voltage. And in case you think 1400 volts is too high, we have parts that go 1700 volts now because the voltage is getting higher. The CMTI is more than 100 kilovolts per microsecond, and that's at 1500 volts. The 66 nanosecond prop delay, which is very, very quick. Soft turn off, desaturation detect with a programmable delay, you have an IGBT gate clamp during short circuit, and even though our IGBT is with a non-semi, a short circuit protected as a field stop family, we have one, two, and three, but still, it's nice to have double brakes in case something happens. Miller clamp with a high sink current and a very tight under voltage lockout for IGBT safety. And just about anything in the high power, high voltage world, we cover it. Armored powertrain, EV chargers, and that's the garage kind of board, the motor drivers, solar in inverters, and it's an SOIC 60 wide body. And you can actually see the space that we have in the micrometers, of course, but it could stand, as you can see, five kilovolts. And then the thing, this is great for the part like that. You have the gate driver and the isolation on the same IC. NCD 57000 versus NCD 57001. 57000 is pin to pin compatible with TI and the 57000 1001 is pin-to-pin compatible with Infineon. All the features are still the same. Everything is great except pin-to-pin -pin compatibility with two parts. And of course, will be a lot less pricier than our competition. So that makes sense and everybody's happy. And this way you have more than one vendor if you're a buyer, for example, or if you're an engineer and you have to come up with two parts. You have the primary and you have the secondary that's a drop-in compatible. The 16-pin wide-body isolated drivers, the specs and the pinout, which is fairly easy. We have the digital isolated drivers here. And as you can see, the 57,000 
remember, 7001 is the same thing, right? So you have 7 point amp peak for the source, 7 plus amp peak for the uh, sync current, 66 nanosecond propagation delay. Delay distortion, 15 nanoseconds. Association voltage, 5 kilovolts, CMTI at 100 kilovolts per microsecond, and operating temperature. For the 8 pin narrow and wide body isolated drivers, and wide body is important. Uh, so if we look at the on semi 57080 versus Infineon TI and the analog, again, we do 8 amp peak with the 4 amp and the 6 amp at 9 volts, which is a continuous drive. Our drop at 200 milliamps, 200 millivolts, we prop delay with 70 nanoseconds, with, but delay matching with 10 nanoseconds. And that's very important for the high side. If you have more than one part that you're driving, you want to be able to drive them simultaneously because if you don't, one part will start sinking all the current and it's going to basically blow up at some point. So that's important part. The end of voltage uh, lockout variations with 300 millivolts. Everybody else is sitting much higher than us, almost double. We actually have 100 kilovolt per microsecond and the operating temperature is 125 degrees C. So that's perfect industrial application. The example of the uh, 57200, 01 and 02, they have bridge driver. And remember, the V part is the vehicle. So we have an automotive version of it. So high current for the small part like that, plus or minus 2 amps, and depending on the application, will be great. The CMOS bus operation up to 800 volts. You can have 800 volts on the output and 3.3 volts on the input. Doesn't get any better than that. Your logic input can be 3, 3 5, or 15 volts. So not a problem. Of course, 100 kilovolts per microsecond. Asymmetric under voltage protection for both channels. So you shut down at a different point, then you turn on. The VCC VB up to 25 volts and output in phase with an input signals. We do have a part that will be out of phase if need be. So there's no need to use external inverter. And a safe negative area. As, as you start coming down, shutting down from 800 volts, inevitably you will overshoot that. And that, that overshoot will be more than one volt. And so we are capable of actually withstanding that, no problem. And anywhere, the, the uh, bi-directional boost converters, or just bi-directional DC to DC, which is applicable in the uh, solar type applications with the UPS and, and the batteries itself, the LLC, so the resonant half bridge or full bridge type converters, and the full and half bridges devices as well. And it's an SOIC narrow body. Some parts we have dead time of 30 nanoseconds. Some parts we have no interlock and dead time is not available, but in some cases it can be adjustable. And 57202, 1,000 nanoseconds. So there's a lot of differences between the parts depending on the circuit. Because the power world, especially the switching power world, they call it it's like a marriage. You have to compromise. Nothing is perfect. It's not a microprocessor digital world. Now tell me about your dev tools and what your future roadmap looks like. We have an abundance of reference boards. The tiny drive board compared to a pen here for the NCD 5701B, and it's right here. The two-channel board for the NCD 57000, a regular one, in case you need to drive more than one FET or IGBT. Then competitive eval board for the NCD 570X, depending on what you're looking for, you can use us. Then you can, you can compare competition A, competition B, competition C, competition I, depending on what the customer is looking for. The tiny drive board, and this is a single part. The two-channel board, again, for the NCD 57000X and a different variety where you can use this sort of as a daughter board. And the competitive eval board for the NCD 57000, where you can just plug, plug things in if you have either a mixer connector or you have something that will plug in that board. And that, that makes it very interesting because you can test parts and you can compare them at the same time. Thanks, Art. Once again, that's Art Gonski from On Semiconductor. If you'd like to learn more about On Semiconductor's isolated and non-isolated gate drivers, click the links in the description or visit mauser.com. And be sure to check back soon for the next episode of Tech Chats. Mm -hmm.